Hi, I'm Tova from Chris and Tova's Amazing Adventures, and today we're in the kitchen. So as you know, we're preparing for a road trip of a lifetime driving from Canada to Nicaragua, and we want to make sure that we have our road snacks and our cooler well stocked and packed for the road. So we thought we'd share with you what we're bringing. So stay tuned for some tips and tricks about what to pack on the road, some cheap and inexpensive non-perishable food snacks, and things that will make your camp life fast and easy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is we have one Rubbermaid bin full of non-perishable food and snacks. So this is everything we're going to need to keep us going for the first little while. Of course, we'll replenish and restock on the road, but it's always nice to have some good staples when you're camping that are ready to go um, when we're driving. You can just grab something out of the box, have a snack, make something to eat, and then we've also got some meal prep done that's non-perishable. So we roll up to a campsite, it's getting late, maybe we didn't have time or we didn't find a good grocery store to stop at, then we can pull something out of this box and eat from there. So let's take a look at what we got packed in this box. It is pretty full. Um, I would definitely recommend that if you're preparing for a big trip, that you do this ahead of time to make sure that everything you want to bring actually fits into the box that you're planning to take. So as you know, Chris and I are pretty frugal, so we always like to pack snacks, one, to save money, but also to make sure that we've always got some stuff um, ready and available. Sometimes when you're traveling, nothing worse than being a little bit hangry and not having any food. So we want to come well prepared. Um, also, in order to save money, we like to make a lot of our own food. So things like making our own pre-packaged oatmeal instead of buying uh, the commercial pre-packaged oatmeal, that'll save you a lot of money. As well, things like those pre-packaged uh, oil and bag meal dinners that you can get at like any of the camping supply stores. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, this is an example of one of those pre-packaged, ready, oil and bag meals. Basically, all you do when you're camping is you just add water to this, close it up, let it get hot, and then it's ready to go. Really convenient, they taste good, but they're high in sodium, and I don't know if you can see the price here, very expensive. So we got this one on sale for $6, but the regular price was $9.96. That's Canadian. Um, I can make a lot of food for $10. So stick around as we unpack the box. I will show you how I make some of these meals uh, for camping or hiking. Great, easy to make, fast to prepare if you're in a hurry, and also great for saving space. Okay, let's dig into this box and see what we've got packed. Um, okay, so first thing, we've got a giant bag of different kinds of granola bars. We have a couple of bags of little commercial snacks. These are a little um, like date and coconut treats. Those are pretty yummy. We've definitely got some homemade trail mix. So we like to just buy our favorite nuts and some dried fruit and mix it together and then kind of portion it out in little Ziploc bags. Um, we could put this in one giant big one, but this makes it a little bit easier while we're driving. We just grab out a bag and then we have this to snack on for a while. Um, what we've got packed for this trip, we've got cashews, almonds, walnuts, and then mixed in some dried pineapple and some dried strawberries, but whatever you like. Uh, one probably good tip, if you do tend to like the trail mixes that have like some candies or like chocolate mixed in, maybe not the best option if you're hiking or traveling somewhere hot because those will melt and that will make a real mess inside your bag of trail mix. So keep it heat friendly. So as we pull out, we got a few bags of trail mix. 
Uh, we've got some straight nuts. So we've got some bags of pistachios. Oh, another bag of trail mix. Um, this is all squirreled away in here pretty, pretty, pretty tight. Uh, more pistachios. What else have we got? More pistachios. Uh, we also like to pack a few mason jars, just good for storage. Um, and then we can reuse those to put other things in as we're on the go. We've got some straight walnuts. Those are really nice uh, just to snack on on their own, but also they're great in salads. So if, if you're looking for a salad topper, um, we've got a little bag of trail mix. If we picked that up on a plane or something, bring that with us. Uh, we've got a couple of bags of candy. So sometimes it's nice to have a little sweet treat if you're on the road. So some of our favorite candies. Another bag of granola bars. This one's not quite full. Additional bag of little trail mix. Okay, so we've got most of the kind of snack foods out. Trail mix, nuts, granola bars, and a little bit of candy. Now we'll get into a little bit more of the prepackaged meal prep. So we've got a couple of bags of um, rice. Uh, and, and mixed grains. These are the ones that are already cooked. You basically just have to reheat them. So those are fast and easy, can make lots of great meals with those. And they're pretty inexpensive. If you look for them on sale, pick up a couple of those. Um, of course, we've got some ramen noodles because who doesn't like ramen noodles uh, in general? You can always jazz this up a little bit, make it a little bit more of a meal, cut up a little bit of beef jerky, maybe throw in some fresh spinach, kale, or if you've got some frozen vegetables, something like that, toss those in, make it a meal with your ramen. Um, so breakfast, we've got um, a couple of bags of oatmeal. And so as I mentioned at the beginning, we don't generally like to buy the commercial prepackaged ones. Um, they do tend to have a lot of extra sugar, more than you need to sweeten it up. Plus you can buy a whole bag of oats um, for less than what it costs you to get like six or eight individual packages. And this is a ton of oatmeal that'll last us for a long time. So we've got a couple of different flavors. Um, I like to buy the large flake oats. Uh, they tend to be my favorite, but whichever ones you like, you don't need to pick the quick cook ones. It really takes no time at all to make these oats. So you've got your oats. This one's cinnamon and brown sugar. So oats mixed in with a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of brown sugar, and then just make sure that you give the bag a good shake or a good stir, portion out your oatmeal, and then you're ready to go. Uh, however you want to cook your oatmeal, there's a couple of ways you can do it on the road. You can definitely, um, you know, do the boil and in the pot. I normally like to either just do, put it in your bowl, pour in the boiling water and just let it sit for a couple of minutes. That's enough to cook the oats. Or if you like cold overnight oats, you can just put your oatmeal in a reusable jar or if you've got a camping cup that has a secure lid, um, but you wanna make sure that it's secure and away from any animals, you can put your oatmeal in there add in your water or if you're using milk or milk alternative like coconut, almond, um, and then it's ready to go in the morning and it'll be a cool oatmeal. So depending on what you like. But we've got cinnamon brown sugar. We've got uh, maple and brown sugar. So for the maple one, uh, we have some maple sugar uh, being Canadian. Maybe that's ironic, maybe it's not, but a little bit of maple sugar. This is really tasty, nice and coffee for a little treat or works really well with oatmeal. So we have some of that added coffee as well. And then obviously just the brown sugar in there. And then the third flavor we have is coconut oats. This one has oats. There's a mix of flaxseed in there, dried shredded coconut. Um, this is perfect on its own, but I actually do like to add a little bit of chocolate chips with this one uh, right at the end. Um, so we are making room in our cooler for a bag of chocolate chips in case we need a little bit of chocolate. So next thing we've got is a nice big bag of dried cranberries. Now this is a bigger bag than I would normally take with us. Um, I really like to put dried cranberries 
uh, in salad, it's nice in trail mix, throw it in with some oatmeal. There's lots of good uses for this. But the reason that I have such a big bag are, these are my favorite ones. These are from Costco. They're like the biggest and the juiciest uh, dried cranberries that we found anywhere. And we were visiting Chris's mom, my mother-in-law, and uh, she gave me this bag. So thanks, Anna. We've got lots of cranberries for the road, and I'm sure we'll have some uh, to enjoy once we get to Nicaragua. Okay, so the next thing coming out of this box are our homemade boiling bag camp meals. So similar to this, but a whole lot cheaper and super easy. So I've actually got um, eight total of these boiling bag dinners. All you need to do while you're camping is just add water, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then it's ready to go. No straining. Um, no actual cooking required and you can even keep it inside the bag if you want if you don't want to do dishes um, just make sure that you put it in a make sure that you put it in a cup that can hold boiling water okay so what we've got here is I've got uh, a couple of different kinds we've got chili mac and cheese and then we've got an alfredo pasta so you wanna make sure that you choose pasta that is quicker cooking, which means that you're gonna to want to have um, smaller sized pasta. So like small shells, uh, elbow macaroni, anything that's not super big and dense because you're not actually cooking it in rapid boiling water, you're pouring boiling water over it and then basically letting it steep or sit um, to cook the noodles through. This also means that you're not gonna overdo your pasta and it'll be nice and al dente every time. So for the Alfredo pasta, um, you just get your pasta noodles, you mix in, um, if you go to the spice section of your grocery store, uh, where they'll have like packages of like pre-made spices and sauces, pick up an Alfredo mix, just pour that in the bag. And then with this, I usually like to add in some fresh vegetables. Um, you can toss in some meat. So if, if either you're cooking something or if I know we're gonna have this, we'll have a little bit in our cooler, um, whether it's a little bit of ground meat or some sausage, toss in some beef jerky, canned tuna, canned salmon, whatever you like you can go into this to spice it up a little bit more, make it more of a meal and throw in some fresh vegetables once it's cooked. So like I said, put this in your container, pour in boiling water, let it sit for 10 minutes with the lid on and it's ready to go. Um, and I would have made all of this for under $10, what we would have paid for the one pre-packaged meal. So it really, really does make a difference. And there's lots of great recipes online. Um, if you're looking to make all different flavors, I've only made a couple today, but we've done lots of different ones, uh, different kind of Thai food. Um, you can always check out my Pinterest account. I, I've got some good recipes in there, um, but there's plenty of stuff online. Uh, look for backpacking meals. Typically, that's what a lot of people use them for because um, it makes it easier. You're not taking a cooler and it's fast when you get into camp, but good for any type of camping. Uh, the second one we have is a chili mac and cheese. So same idea, you've got your noodles, mix in the cheese sauce, toss in either your favorite taco seasoning, um, chili powder, whatever kind of spice blend you like for chili, a little bit of chipotle. So in here I have put in um, some garlic, some chili powder and some chipotle powder and then the cheese sauce is in here as well and then with this i like to um, take a can of chili so like the pre-made canned chili so basically when we get into camp open up your your bowl pour in your packet add in half a can of the pre-made chili pour in your boiling water and let that sit and then basically you're ready to go. The key thing that you want to remember when you're mixing up these boiling bags, when you buy the pre-made ones, the instructions are on there for you, but you don't want to add too much water. So when you're normally cooking pasta, you have a big pot of rolling, rolling boiling water, you pour the noodles in and then you're going to strain it after. When you're cooking in this method, you basically want to fill your container so that it just 
covers the noodles. That's all it needs. And then that's gonna be this, the liquid that creates your sauce um, with no straining. Okay, so the last few things we've got in the box, kind of a little bit of odds and ends. Um, I like to pack in a few packages of spice mix, of seasoning. So we've got a couple of Alfredo, a cheese sauce, and a taco seasoning all packaged, ready to go. Um, some canned oysters, because I really like those. High protein, nice, easy, nutritious, either snack or mix them in with some pasta or some meat. So we got a couple packages of those. Of course, which camping trip is not complete with a little bit of OG craft dinner. Our table is getting very full. I actually surprised myself that I was able to get all of this into this box. So of course we've got coffee supplies because as you know, Chris and I are big coffee drinkers. So this is a container of coffee whitener. Uh, we will be packing regular coffee creamer in our cooler, but this is always great to have if you don't have a cooler, if you run out of space in your cooler, you run out of milk, nothing is worse if you don't drink your coffee black to not have a little bit of creamer in the morning. So we've got this as a backup. We've also got a great big bag of coffee. Um, so this should last us for a good long time. One of our favorites. And then we also have um, a little stash of, um, what is this, like instant coffee. So if we really want to just grab a quick coffee, we don't want to use the French press, we can just mix this up in a cup. It's got everything mixed in and some of these even have like the cream and sugar mixed in. For those that don't, we've got a little extra coffee whitener in individual packets. So we're well prepared for coffee time. Okay, so last couple things in the box. Uh, we also got some pizza dough flour already pre-mixed and ready to go. So in this big Ziploc bag, I actually have uh, four smaller Ziploc bags, um, enough pizza dough to make one pizza um, each bag. So this is a recipe that is a skillet pizza. The dough doesn't need to rise, so it's perfect for camping. You use self-rising flour, some regular flour, yeast, salt, and sugar. And then all you're gonna do at your campsite is mix the flour, yeast, pizza dough mixed together with some water, and then you essentially start cooking it right in your pan with all of your toppings. This is a great recipe. Stay tuned, we'll show you how we actually make it in another video, but this is an excellent pizza recipe. Fast, easy, no rising, no muss, no fuss. So we'll obviously pick up some good pizza toppings along the way, fresh vegetables, meats, pepperonis, all that kind of good stuff. And then we do have one popcorn Jiffy Pop. So we could cook this on the stove. Uh, we'll cook it on our camp stove, but we do love popcorn, so this is a great option. Um, one thing that isn't in the box that I know uh, we do have a bit of room that will be making its way in is just some regular popcorn kernels. Uh, so once we use up the Jiffy Pop, we can just pop some popcorn in our big uh, Dutch oven. And let me look down in the bottom of the box. Uh, I do have a couple more things. <laughs> one more can of nuts. <laughs> we love nuts. Um, and then we just got a couple of plastic forks and spoons just in case. Uh, we do have regular cut cutlery in our camp kit. And then we've got some like wet wipes, hand sanitizers, and my favorite coffee mug, uh, just to make me feel like I'm at home when we're on the road. Uh, Chris's coffee mug. Where's his favorite coffee mug? Snowman coffee mug. He'll go in the bucket as well. Okay, so that's everything that came out of our non-perishable food box. Um, that gives us lots of snack, breakfast, and lunch dinner options that we can have on the road. Basically fast, easy, ready to go. And then of course we'll mix that with fresh things that we pick up along the way. Um, and of course we'll be stopping at some of the local uh, street food and eateries while we make our voyage. 
So we don't just have non-perishable foods that we're taking on this trip. We do have a really nice uh, cooler or really more of it's a fridge freezer that we will stock as well. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so we've got this really awesome fridge freezer cooler, bit of an investment, but well worth it. It's a Brogue RV brand cooler. This cooler plugs in to the lighter adapter um, in our car. It can also be plugged into a regular outlet if you're somewhere that has power. Um, so this is really gonna help us along our journey. So this fridge freezer is really awesome. You can actually change the door orientation to swing open from either side, depending on how you're putting it in your vehicle. It's got this little cutting board. Um, and then the baskets in the inside, there's one bigger one and one smaller one. Depending on how you configure it, you can set um, one side to be fridge, one side to be freezer. You could make both fridge, both freezer, however you want to set it up for the food that you're bringing. Uh, stay tuned for a future video. We'll give you a full review and exactly all the ins and outs about the Bogue RV cooler. But this is a great addition for us. Um, it also means that we won't need to source and find ice along the way. And that also means that you don't have to worry so much about stacking your food in the cooler in a way that it's not going to get anything wet. What we'll be putting in the cooler will be running the big side as the fridge the small side as the freezer. Um, in the freezer, we'll have some ice packs to help keep the dogs cool if they need it. Um, we'll have um, the chocolate chips, as well as there'll be some room in there for some frozen vegetables that we can toss in with other meals, um, and then some room that we can put some meat in. Of course, we won't be picking up meat until after we get across the borders so that we don't have any issues with border crossings. Uh, so what we'll be putting in the fridge section of our cooler is we'll have coffee creamer, eggs, cheese, meat. Um, we will put some leftover dinners in there. So we are packing with us uh, some basically to-go containers so that we can package up any leftovers and put a few leftover options in the refrigerator. So that will make for fast, easy meals when we want them. Um, we'll also have some salad dressing in there. There'll also be room for a couple of beers in there so we can enjoy a cool beverage when we get to camp. So thanks for joining our camp food, road food video. Um, now I've got some work to do to put all of this food and organize it and get it back in our go box. We would love to hear from you if you've got any tips, tricks, great recipes, things that you always take with you when you're out on an adventure. Uh, drop that in the comments and we'll certainly get back to you. Otherwise, we are um, about two weeks away from leaving for our giant adventure driving from Nicaragua to Canada. So we'll see you on the next amazing adventure. Okay, fine, I'll film you. Go ahead, do it. Crazy.